Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 21st, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Mariester, Florida. Brad today published a diary with a recent version of QuarkBot or QBot. Now, uh, this time QuarkBot was used to install Dark VNC. As so often, it started with an email and a link. The victim then downloaded a zip archive that contained an Excel file. And then, of course, macros were used to download the QuarkBot DLL files. After checking connectivity, which interestingly used the openSL.org website, it then established command control traffic and installed dark VNC. Dark VNC, as the name implies, well, it is a VNC. It allows a full desktop remote access, but with traditional VNC, the regular user of the workstation may notice the activity with dark vnc you typically have a second desktop that's of a hidden desktop that's being set up uh, that the attacker controls and the victim does not notice that there is a second user connected to their system typically that's then being used for banking malware and the like uh, by using the victim's uh, desktop you're actually able to bypass some of the checks because you already are using the correct IP address, you're using some of the cookies that the website may leave behind, making credential theft so much easier. In the case of compromise, as well as samples, and of course, anonymized PCAPs are available for download. Yesterday, I talked about the Oracle quarterly critical patch update and how it included some updates for Java as well. Well, uh, one interesting vulnerability is getting a lot of press here, and that's CVE 2022-2144-9, or also called by the discoverer Neil Madden, Psychic Signatures. The term psychic signatures, he derived it from the psychic paper that's used in Doctor Who. It sort of displays whatever message he wants you to see. But the interesting part here is that the psychic signatures do affect the elliptic curve uh, digital signature algorithm implementation in Java. And elliptic curves, of course, have gotten a lot of uh, followers and are used very heavily because they are way more efficient than some of the older RSA algorithms that have been used before. So what's going on here and uh, what's uh, the problem? If you are using elliptic curve uh, DSA, then what you end up with are two values R and S, and that's essentially the digital signature. Now, in order to verify whether the digital signature is correct, you have an equation, the one half of it you multiply with R, the other half of it you multiply with S, and if the two results are the same, then of course your digital signature works out okay. But the problem is if R or and S are zero, then whatever you multiply is zero. So it's always true and the signature always works out. So implementations of ECDSA are supposed to check that R and S are not zero and that's exactly what was forgotten here in Java. So essentially, if you create a digital signature with R and S zero, it'll always work out as correct. This of course had so far-ranging implications, the elliptic curve uh, digital signature algorithm is used pretty much anywhere, JWTs or SAML, also WebAuth N and such, these algorithms heavily rely on ECDSA. Java 15 and later are affected, so make sure you apply the respective updates. Well, in teaching intrusion detection this week here in Florida, and today started talking about Snort, so it's just appropriate that I'll be covering a vulnerability in Snort that actually was discovered on April 14th. It's a denial of service vulnerability in Snort in the Modbus 
preprocessor. Now, Modbus is, of course, one of those industrial control protocols, so you don't necessarily are using this preprocessor. But one of the problems here is that if you are susceptible to the vulnerability and some of the embedded uh, Snort versions inside uh, some of Cisco's equipment, for example, are vulnerable, then an attacker may be able to essentially just shut down Snort and with that, of course, shut down your detection capabilities. Update Snort and it does affect the 2.9 as well as the 3.1 branch of Snort. And well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.